Our first question comes from Mark Berman. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, Mark. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Mark Berman from Fox in Houston. When you look at uh, what Houston can do, especially rebounding, what are some things that jump out at you? Well, uh, we're still kind of uh, in the early stages. Um, jumped in, uh, obviously, watched the game last night, jumped into some. Uh, they just very well coached team. Uh, obviously, they've got a great balance of uh, skill, toughness, and athleticism. Um, they grinded out a tough one yesterday. Just a, a very talented team. Um, you know, Grimes is a, is a stud, and uh, you know they they present a lot of problems. All right, our next question comes from Zachary Brazler from New York Post. Go ahead, Zachary. Uh, Zach Brazil at New York Post. Wait, what, what's the relationship kind of like with with um, Ethan and, and, and his and his dad? I mean, how much do you think having him on staff has kind of really helped Ethan develop and become this this player? Yeah, they have an incredible relationship. Um, <laughs> you know, they're they're in the gym a lot. Um, you, you just t you can tell that connection, um, and and you know, Coach Thompson does a great job of. You know, not not overstepping, and you know, at times, and and I had to be reminded this with Trace. We got to remember we're we're coaches when we're on the court, not dads, and he's done a great job of that. Um, and it's just it's neat to see the bond that they have, and and you know how they're really enjoying this experience together. Um, and I know, you know, Ethan ne never never gets very emotional. He's so level headed out there. And I'm sure a big part of that is knowing that that dad's right there at his side, has his back. All right, next question comes from Nick Dashel. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, Nick Dashel from the Oregonian. Wayne, uh, two questions. One, you're obviously entering some rarefied air here. How do you keep the, the team from just overthinking this and just focusing on, on the now? Second question is about War Eve. How, how did you envision him becoming the rebounding warrior he's become? Yeah, uh, the first part, you know, we're just we're enjoying the ride, we're, but we're telling our guys to keep their feet on the ground, stay focused. Um, you know, you know that we, you know, we haven't been over celebrating uh, in the locker room, and they're they're hungry and thirsty for more, and we just just keep reminding them that it's our time to stay loose, keep their minds freed up. You know, play hard and stay together. And um, you know, you, you look at the games that we've won. You know, we've we've answered some pretty good runs from the opponents, and we're we're playing really good D. And at times, you know, if we're a little insecure with the ball, we're not making shots. The defense is what's been keeping us in it. And uh, you know, when you mention that to the guys to defend to get stops, I think it kind of keeps them from getting too caught up in the moment. And uh, they've done a good job of that. And yes, we, um, you know. Or he came to us with great rebounding numbers, um, you know, and, and defensively, but he does a great job. But on the offensive glass, he just presents so many problems just because he's he's quick. He gets off the ground. He's got great anticipation skills. And, um, you know, he's a real, real warrior. And, you know, that the, the, we are just walking here talking about what a bonus this year is because, you know, initially we thought he would probably have to redshirt. Um, and, and he, we're happy he got that waiver. Um, and he's certainly, you know, as the year's gone on, he's just continued to improve because, uh, you know, he works works at it. He knows he's he's got to keep improving, that his ceiling's high. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a delight to see, you know, where he's at now from where he started. And we kind of joke to imagine when you have a full off season with us, you know, where he's going to be a year from now. But we'll, we'll keep him in this moment right now. All right, next question comes from Aaron Beard, the Associated Press. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, Wayne, Aaron Beard with the AP. I'm generally based in North Carolina, but I'm here in Indy. Um, I wanted to touch on defense with you really quickly. Um, you're holding teams to 31% in the tournament. Uh, you know, it, even with a mentality, even when you're focused on it, those are numbers that are still very difficult to attain defensively. Has there been a specific key or two you think that this group has maybe elevated its game defensively here in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think we have down the stretch overall, though, even at the end of conference and uh, in the conference tournament. Um, we, we've, we've really got our guys bought into some of the, the fundamental things. And I, I know I'd talked in the past about a, 
a defensive drill we, we put in not too long ago um, that's really helped us um, with our ball pressure and then with our help D. And um, we hit it every day in practice, uh, even do a version of it in warm-ups uh, you know, before the games. And our guys have really bought into it. And then I think here, here uh, in the tournament, our, our guys have really done a good job of our changing defenses, mixing it up. Um, you saw that a lot more last night than in our, our earlier games. Um, you know, our 2-3 matchup to go into man-to-man. -man. Um, we even threw in some 1-3-1 one, one late. And our guys, our guys really get off on that. They, they see that it slows teams down and can cause, um, you know, some problems for them, and they feed off of it. Next question comes from Julian Minenton with KEZI. Go ahead, Julian. Wayne, you've talked about the way this team has overcome adversity and basically answered the call every single time your guys' backs were against the wall. Do you think, you know, after the 34-point loss to Arizona or having to win three games in three days at the tournament just to get here, you think that all that kind of adversity has helped during this stretch run in, in the tournament so far? Oh, definitely. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, our guys have developed a level of, of trust and confidence that, you know, took some time to get. And, you know, I, I keep talking about, you know, and every, every team's in this situation, you know, we didn't have the summer workouts. The fall was kind of abbreviated, start of the season pushed back. We had a lot of new guys, a lot of young guys. Um, and, and it took us a while to put it all together. But we saw glimpses of it, you know, throughout, especially the second half of con uh, conference play. Uh, but. Here, here you are. You know we've we've just we've got a belief. You know we're 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 here. We're not satisfied, um, and we're drawing from all the experiences, both on and off the court, from the last 12 months. Uh, again, it's developed a real chemistry um, that I think uh, has us in this position. And we were on a road trip, our last road trip of conference, Cal and Stanford, and we approached that trip like it was the NCAA tournament. Um, you know we have to win you know, or, or we're done, sort of. And we, we didn't put too much pressure on them, but we said, let's start our postseason now. We won two of the last three. We, we, we tripped up at home against Oregon, but then rallied them. And, you know, it's fun. I, I ran into one of the UCLA assistants uh, after our game last night, gave me a, a firm high five and just said, unbelievable. I'm so happy for you guys. You know, you, you're down 16 in the first half in the tournament to us, and now you're in the Elite Eight. And, uh, speaks to the resiliency of this group and how they respond to adversity. They pull together and find a way. And obviously, as the head coach, you know, I'm really proud of them for that. All right. Our final question comes from Brenna Green from KREM. Go ahead, Brenna. Hi, Coach Tinkle. Brenna Green, Prem 2 Sports Hi. and Spokane. Um, I was just wanting to ask you, uh, there's been a lot of, of connections to Spokane in this tournament this year between you, obviously Gonzaga, the Groves brothers having great tournaments. Um, just what is it like for you to watch uh, Spokane as a whole as become a bigger and bigger basketball city, especially since you were kind of a part of the group that kind of got it bigger on the ground floor? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it makes me proud. I mean, such a great city, so many good people. We go back every every summer. Uh, you know, to Eastern Washington, North Idaho. I got a lot of my, my best friends living there still. Uh, try to sneak a few rounds in up at Manitou. Um, and it's, it's really neat to see. Uh, shared a, I shared a birthday text with John Stockton the other day, and I said, uh, you're still my most favorite guy to play pickup ball with. I think back to my high school days and early college days, some of the runs we had. Um, it, it's neat because basketball wasn't, really a big thing in Spokane until those early to, to mid eighties. Um, you know, and then obviously, you know, my dad had having worked uh, at Gonzaga's, that's what brought us out from Chicago. Uh, I've always closely followed the Zags, my daughter playing there, uh, you know, so it's, uh, it, it's just cool to see not, not only, you know, where Gonzaga is, but how they've done and, and for so, how, how long they've done it. It's really remarkable. Um, and, uh, you know, bumped into Mark the other day, walking around the baseball field, talking about some of the good old days and um, makes me proud, you know, and uh, there's a lot of good athletes that come out of Spokane, not just basketball, but it does make me proud, you know, that, that you know, I once had a hand in, in you know, part of the, 
the history there as far as basket, basketball goes. Our first question comes from Mark Berman. Go ahead, Mark. Maurice, how are you doing? Mark Berman from Fox Television in Houston. Got a couple questions for you. Number one, how special is this for you? It's already, it's already special. How special is this to be going against your hometown team? Uh, it's everything, you know. I've always wanted to go to UH, but I wasn't blessed with the opportunity to. So, playing against them is the next best thing. Next question comes from Julian Menenson from KEZI. Go ahead, Julian. Congratulations on getting here to the Elite Eight. Uh, just wanted to to ask you, um, yesterday in yesterday's game, it took a little bit to get going, but once you did, you kind of stuffed the stat sheet and did a little bit of everything. Was anything said to you, um, you know, to kind of calm your nerves a little bit, or, or what was it that took a little bit to get going, and why were you so successful, especially in that second half, but doing everything? Uh, I'd probably say uh, it was Coach Stewart. He came up to me. He told me when I get back in, be aggressive, uh, play just who play without nerves and uh, play for your teammates. So when I got out there, that's what I tried to do. I tried to do whatever I could to help the team win, whether that was scoring, rebounding, or playing defense. Next question comes from Zachary Braziller from the New York Post. Go ahead, Zachary. Uh, Zach Braziller, New York Post. Um, what, how would you kind of describe the relationship with Ethan and, and, and Stevie? Kind of what's, you know, that dynamic they have? Uh, kind of touching up on what Coach Tinkle said, uh, Coach uh, Thompson, he does a great job of uh, not overstepping, but uh, in terms of like their relationship, he's like a great mentor. They're always in the gym together. Uh, I think he kind of calms E down and uh, he kind of he's kind of like a father figure to everybody on the team in general. Next question comes from Aaron Beard from the Associated Press. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, Warif, uh, we were I'd asked Coach about the defensive performance you guys have had in the NCAA tournament. What do you think has been the reason you guys have elevated your game? And on top of that, if you could, could you describe a little bit about the drill he mentioned that has helped you guys sort of, as you know, escalate or elevate your game a little bit defensively? Yeah, yeah, it's all credit to that drill. Um, the drill kind of, uh, all of us were kind of forced to get in gaps. It's a four-on-four -four drill, and we rotate. And basically what you do is you can't allow the uh, offensive player to penetrate. You have to get in your gaps and help out your teammates. So I think over time, just continuously doing that drill has gotten our chemistry up. And we know that if we, got, if we get beat, our teammate has our back. And we'll go back to Mark Berman for the final question. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, Warriors. Again, Mark Berman from Fox and Houston. I read where your, your father has a, rela a long-time relationship with, with Akeem Olajuwon. Can you tell me about that and how, especially said again, you're going to get his alma mater. Could you, could you say that last part again? I said, uh, I read where your father's had a, has a, has a long time friendship with Akeem Olajuwon. And uh, can you tell me about that? And how, 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 what's this like going against his alma mater as well? Uh, yeah, my dad does have a relationship with Akeem Olajuwon. When he first came to this country, they actually met. They hung out a little bit. They, I think my dad stayed at his house for some time. But that's as far as I know. He's usually in our community. Like, he comes to our mosque. He's Nigerian, so I can relate with him. And playing against his alma mater, uh, it's everything. Like I said, I'm a Houston guy, too, so I'm really looking forward to this game. And I'm, like, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I apologize. We do have one more question. We'll go back to Aaron Beard from the AP. Go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, worry if this is a little bit off topic of the game, but the NCAA has has ambassadors that are working with you guys inside the bubble, basically to help you guys with stuff. They have people that can get you stuff if you need it, supplies if you forgot cable cords or whatever. Um, have you had to make orders and kind of what's that experience been like in terms of having these things kind of brought to you so you can stay, you know, in the in the environment the the bubble? Yeah, they're there for anything we need. They've been helping us along the way. Uh, when I first got out here, I was trying to play my game, but I forgot my HDMI cord. So I called up one of the ambassadors and they just had one right for me. I tried to give it back to him, but he said we could keep it. So yeah, they're there for us.